So NXI was a phase four multi-center perspective randomized open label blind ended point trial in patients with acute ICH treated with factor 10 inhibitors. Patients were eligible if they were over 18 years of age who presenting with an acute intracerebral hemorrhage within six hours of symptom onset, who had taken the last dose of factor 10A inhibitor within 15 hours of randomization, and the ICH volume was confined to 0.5 to 60 cc's. These patients are randomized one-to-one -to, -one to receive indexin at alpha or usual care as per the discretion of local treating physician and investigator. The uh, primary efficacy endpoint for this trial was effective hemostasis at 12 hours, and this file is defined by meeting all three of the following criteria. One, having 35% or less growth uh, in hematoma volume between baseline and 12 hours, having no greater than uh, a six-point increase on the NIHSS at 12 hours, and then also no rescue therapy between three and 12 hours after randomization. Secondary endpoints also included the change in percent from baseline to nadir in antifactor 10 activity uh, during the last two hours after randomization, as well as selected um, safety endpoints such as thromboembolic events at 30 days and 30-day mortality. The, however, in uh, June of 2023, the study was stopped early for overwhelming efficacy with indexin alpha versus usual care in um, achieving hemostatic efficacy. Um, and then by the time the decision was made, an additional 80 participants had been enrolled for a total study population of 530 participants. Baseline variables were evenly distributed between both uh, treatment arms, and the mean age uh, was about 80, which is not unsurprising in this elderly high-risk population um, who has bleeding in the brain. Uh, roughly half of the proportion of participants were female. One in 10 had prior history of MI, and one in five had prior history of stroke. The indication for anticoagulation was predominantly atrial fibrillation at 87%, and this was a high-risk population of it, uh, with the chas score median of 4. Baseline hematoma volume was roughly 10 cc's, which is just a bit less than what you would expect in this population of factor 10 inhibitor associated ICH, where possible cohorts have suggested roughly about a 13 cc median. And this is likely due to the fact that we excluded uh, patients with higher um, baseline ICH volumes above 60 cc's, as well as those that had presented with low GCS. The time from symptom onset to baseline scan was 2.2 hours, scan to randomization time was one hour, and door to needle time was two hours, and the median time from symptom onset to treatment was about four hours. Overall, study results suggested that, um, as she indicated rather, that indexinated alpha led to a large absolute reduction um, in a not achieving hemostatic efficacy. So for every 100 patients treated, 13.4 um, patients were more likely to achieve hemostatic efficacy with indexinate versus usual care. And it's important to note that the usual care arm actually included 87% of PCC, so uh, in the usual, people assigned to usual care, 87% received PCC. And in the patients where we have information on the uh, type and dose of PCC they received, over 90% received four-factor PCC, um, and the median dose was 3,000 units, which is usually the max dose um, that's highlighted in guidelines. So uh, we're confident that this is a adequate comparison of indexinate alpha versus the most the best standard of care PCC currently in use. Um, now, in that and those proportions that I just mentioned were uh, in terms of absolute benefit with indexinate for achieving hemostatic efficacy was in the uh, initial population or of. 450 participants that, were, that led to the interim analysis termination of the study. Um, however, in the extended population of 530 participants, it was 11 patients per every 100 treated who benefited um, from achieving hemostatic efficacy. And this was actually predominantly led by excellent hemostatic efficacy, which is even more conservative at no greater than 20% growth in the hematoma. And when we also looked at another outcome in an exploratory fashion because of its high 
correlation with poor outcome at 90 days and has an he absolute hematoma increase of 12.5 cc's or greater. And this has been previously shown to have a an 80 percent positive predictive value for the MRS of four to six at 90 days. Adexanet um, reduced the likelihood of a hematoma growing beyond this 12.5 cc threshold uh, in 7.4 of every 100 patients treated. In subgroup analysis of efficacy, what was kind of interesting to see was that the subgroup of patients who were destined to receive PCC versus the subgroup of, of patients in the usual care arm who was destined to receive no PCC behaved essentially no differently um, in that the effect size of a Dexanet um, versus those destined to receive PCC was statistically the same as those destined to receive no PCC. And actually numerically, um, it was even a bit greater in those destined to receive PCC. Um, and when we combine that with the fact that the baseline anti-factor 10A activity was reduced by 95% with indexinet alpha versus only 24% in usual care, and also some previous data um, suggesting that one PCC does not reduce anti-factor 10A activity any more effectively than placebo. And that too, although there is an improvement in return to endogenous thrombin potential or normal levels of endogenous thrombin potential with PCC versus placebo, it takes about eight hours for it to do it. Um, in contrast to indexinet alpha, where you have immediate um, normalization of endogenous thrombin potential. Um, and, and all this together lends me um, uh, to at least question whether PCC is providing any benefit whatsoever uh, in mitigating hematoma growth in patients presenting with acute ICH. However, um, the benefits of index and alpha were associated, were came at a, some cost, and that was excess thrombotic events at 30 days. Um, there was, uh, for every 100 patients, five more roughly thrombotic events with index and alpha versus usual care. The rates of thrombotic events at one month were 10% in those who received indexinet alpha versus about 6% in those who received usual care. And um, this was particularly actually driven by ischemic stroke that occurred in 6.5% of those, um, so 6.5% of those assigned to indexinet alpha versus about 1.5% of those assigned um, to usual care. Um, there was no effect in all-cause mortality with indexinet versus usual care at 30 days. And we also found no difference in poor outcome on the MRS at 30 days. But it's worth knowing that this trial was never powered to uh, detect a difference in mortality or MRS um, when it was initially sampled for 900 participants, and particularly after being stopped early with the total sample now of 530 participants, we really don't have the power to, to give any good estimates of treatment effect for the mortality outcome. And when it comes to MRS, not only are we limited by power, but also we know that to see uh, um, treatment effect of acute interventions uh, manifest themselves in patients with an acute ICH, typically we need six months and maybe even 12 months of follow-up um, for uh, treatments to clearly differentiate themselves. A and this study was just not designed to detect that uh, with the 30-day uh, follow-up, which was quite brief. Now, when looking at um, subgroup analyses of patients who had from, uh, sorry, the um, treatment response to thrombotic events and looking for any energy uh, heterogeneity and treatment effect of indexinet versus usual care for this outcome. What was interesting is that most of the and almost all of the excess thrombotic events with indexinet alpha versus usual care was seen in patients who entered the study with a prior history of an arterial ischemic event, either uh, ischemic stroke or an MI. Um, so one way to perhaps use this data in clinical practice when trying to weigh the benefits of indexinet alpha for reducing uh, hematoma expansion versus uh, its potential excess risk of thrombotic events is, is excluding uh, patients who um, are have a history of arterial ischemic events where, where the rate of thrombotic events is the highest. 
So in general, um, I'll say that Anexa I has one proven the efficacy of indexant alpha versus PCC in terms of uh, reversal of antifacrotaining activity. It has um, also proven its efficacy for achieving hemostatic efficacy relative to PCC, um, and that um, the subgroup analyses and overall totality of data raise significant questions about whether PCC is providing any benefit at all in patients with acute ICH occurring on antifacrotaining activity.